I work for TD Asset Management. I am the uh, managing director and head of our global real estate investments. We have about $25 billion of uh, uh, real estate investments, both in Canada and around the world, uh, US, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Well, it was a great panel. I was, uh, I was joined by a number of my industry peers. We were talking about the market, the environment, property types of interest. Uh, we were talking a bit about financing, uh, whether you're doing development or uh, focus on core income stabilized uh, properties. We're also talking about uh, uh, the outlook for 2023. Um, what's the implications for open-ended funds and closed-ended funds? So we covered a lot of territory in a short period of time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, certainly we saw in 2022 rising inflation and that prompted central banks to raise rates uh, and that certainly impacted the real estate world whether it was on uh, uh, you have properties with uh, in, uh, with that coming due and you need to roll that over whether you have construction and like 2023 I think that will still be a theme but perhaps from a different place meaning we've seen uh, inflation peak in 2022 uh, and that will probably roll over in 2023 so the question I think a lot of uh, a lot of us will have is uh, how do rates adjust to that? Are we gonna remain constant in 2023 or are we gonna, towards the tail end of 2023, begin seeing some of those rates adjust? So I think that's gonna be a, a theme. Um, clearly the general economic environment, recession, are we gonna have one? How deep is it gonna be? What will be impacted? I think that will be a theme as well in terms of, uh, and the implications of a recession, so unemployment. Then the question is, okay, how does that interrelate with the different sectors, right? Uh, as it relates to the office, uh, that might prompt greater usage of the office or less usage of the office. So it depends on your philosophy, but I think there will be a lot of uh, interest in how the office sector is going to perform, and in that sector, also ESG and and you know decarbonization, at zero targets, etc. The capital associated with that, I think, will be quite important as well. I think industrial is going to be quite interesting because we've seen rents rise dramatically. A huge preference for spaces that have low uh, weighted average lease terms or unoccupied space because of the ability to take rents to market. So how does that translate in 2023 when you see very low vacancy but general econ economic conditions beginning to tighten? That I think will be a core theme in 2023 as well. And then of course res, the financing impacts at the rates and the like, but also uh, what is the implication for the general recession? How does that impact res? And also the immigration targets as well. So it's going to be in a very, very interesting and active year as well. Uh, a lot of different themes. So certainly we saw in 2022 activity trail off at the end of the year. And I think that's just general economic turbulence when, when the bid and asks widens and uh, there's less certainty on what pricing is going to look like. I think we're going to start 2023 like we ended 2022, but I think that's going to back off over time. And so I think we're going to see more activity as pricing uh, becomes a bit more known. Uh, some of that's going to come from the public markets uh, in terms of publicly traded uh, REIT vehicles. Some of that's going to come just from having transaction activity happen. Um, there is folks that are still looking to allocate to the real estate space. There's lots of commentary around, here's all this capital on the sidelines. I'm not sure all that capital is still there, but as it relates to the Canadian market, it's still a very attractive place to be on a global basis. Um, from a real estate perspective, institutionally held, uh, we, we tend to be a little bit more uh, uh, conservative, I would say, whether it's on leverage, whether it's on uh, marking up values or, or the like. So I think that's gonna hold Canada well, and I think we are seeing more global interest in Canada. And I would say about time, because when you look at other countries, namely Australia, that sees a lot of international interest in that market, and you compare Australia to a market like Canada, um, I would say we're, we're at least as attractive. And on the long term, 40 years, we have been at least as attractive. So I would say about time that we see greater global capital interest in Canada. Around the world, I'd say it's going to be very interesting, very uneven geographically uh, because of the conflict uh, happening in Europe. Uh, we had the geopolitical activity in the UK, uh, and so that's clearly impacted the European market and, 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 and has dampened transactions. Uh, but conversely, in, in the developed Asia Pacific, uh, quite a lot of optimism in places like Singapore, um, places like Tokyo, in Seoul, um, also in Sydney as well. So, you know, it's going to be, I think, uh, a little bit uneven in 2023, brighter in the developed Asia Pacific. We have the wild card of when does China reopen, etc., cetera, um, and a little bit more gloomier, at least to start the year, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. I think materially, 
all, ar all around the world, we have seen greater, greater focus on uh, whether it's uh, impact, sustainability, or ESG, ESG, and every element of ESNG. Uh, certainly, the big uh, theme is net zero, uh, the decarbonization, the target setting, uh, whether that is uh, motivated by tenants and occupiers as a way to get Listen, tenants to get in, whether it's tenants that have made their own pledges, whether it is uh, governments that are mandating, whether municipally or, or, or nationally, or at the state level or provincial level, you know, it is coming, it is a, it's a, it's a material element of the story um, of ESG is that decarbonization at zero. And having that data, having, you know, how much, how much waste diversion, what is the energy intensity, what is the carbon intensity, etc. cetera. Um, having that data, pursuing those certifications, I think is really important. The social is important. I think governments are really focused on things like affordability. What is the role of your property in the community? And not just for, on that latter point, not just for res, but also office, retail, you know, industrial. How are you contributing? So I think governments are increasingly focused on that. Probably a legacy of the pandemic. Um, and so, you know, when you step back from that, whether it's in Australia, where we're seeing occupiers refuse to occupy space that's not net zero uh, oriented, or whether it's in the UK where you see capital values adjust as a result of, of, um, of you know, whether it's a green building or a brown discount, a green premium or a brown discount, you see capital values begin to adjust as a result of that. You can look around the world and you, and you can surmise and conclude it's gonna be a bigger theme here in Canada. So it's really important, I think, uh, looking forward into 2023, that we're acutely aware of that uh, and that we're leading. Uh, we're on the front foot. We are ahead of where society expects us to be as an industry.